In the context of AWS Clue and data processing, table partitions refer to a method of dividing a large data set into smaller, more manageable pieces. This division is based on a particular column, often a date or a category, which helps in organizing and querying the data more efficiently. For example, let's say you have a table that stores log data. Instead of having a single massive table, you can partition the table by date. Each partition would then contain the logs for a specific date, making it much faster to query the logs for a particular date without having to scan the entire data set. So why should you use the table partitions? Here are some key benefits. By scanning only the relevant partitions, queries run faster and more efficiently, leading to improved query performance. Since AWS Glue and other services like Athena, they charge based on the amount of data scanned, partitioning can reduce the cost associated with querying the large data sets. It also helps in organizing the data logically, making it easier to manage and maintain. AWS Glue provides robust support for the table partitions. AWS Glue crawlers can automatically detect partitions in your data and update the AWS Glue data catalog accordingly. You do have the option to create these partitions manually as well, but typically automated way would be much easier. Crawlers can infer the schema of each partition, ensuring that your data is correctly structured and accessible. AWS Clue's dynamic frames, which are the core building blocks for job definitions, they natively support partition data, making it easy to work in your ETL scripts. You can partition the data in a nested manner. For instance, you can partition the log data in months. Inside month, you can have days. Inside days, you can have hour, etc. And you can keep the data files under the nested folder. To represent this, we can have multiple partition keys associated with Clue table. So in this case, you can have month, day, and hour as the partition keys. Please note that to create the partitions, your schemas of all the files should be similar. The data format of all the files should also be same. And the compression format should also be same across all the different files. If these conditions are met, you will be able to create the table partitions successfully. I'm going to create a sample partition on the AWS Clue table, which is mapped to the S3 partition data. I will be doing this with the help of a AWS Clue crawler. Before jumping to the crawler, let's check out the sample data. We are at AWS S3 console, and this is the public bucket. It's crawler public US East 1, which provides the sample data mapped to the flight details. Here is the complete set of data. If you see the data is already partitioned based on the variable MON, which is representing the month. So when I say MON equals to one, this represents the first month of January. If I click on it, you will see it has the January 2016. The data is available in the CSV format. This is roughly around 113 MB. Similarly, if you see the MON equals to 10, which is representing the 10th month, October. If I click on it, you will see the October 2016 file, which is roughly around 80 MB. The data available across all these partitions are in the CSV format only, and it's available across all the 12 months for the year 2016. This is the sample partition data on S3, and we will be mapping this data in our AWS Glue data catalog. Now that we understand the sample data set, let's go and create the AWS Clue crawler. We are back to the AWS Clue console. On the left-hand side, you can see the crawlers. Click on it. I'm going to click on Create Crawler. I'll give it a name, Flights Partition Data Crawler. Click on Next. For the data source, I'm going to add a data source here, which is the S3. It's in a different account, so I'm going to choose in a different account and I'll provide the complete path for it. Here is the complete S3 path, which we already explored it. This is the configuration for the subsequent crawler run, so I'm going to just leave the default values as it is and click on Add an S3 data source. Our S3 data source is added. Let's click on Next. For the configure security settings, I need to select the IAM role, which the 
AWS Clue crawler is going to assume. I'll select AWS Clue service role, which already has the permissions to read data from S3 buckets. We can skip the other selections and click on Next. For the target database, I'm going to select the database which we already created earlier, which is Flight Source DB. I'm giving the prefix name as partition so that we can clearly distinguish between the earlier existing tables and the newly created tables. We are good with the other defaults. Let's click on Next. And here is the review page. This is our crawler. This is the data source which we are going to crawl. This is the glue service role which we are going to use. This is the target database and the table prefix we are providing here as partitioned underscore. Let's click on create crawler. Our crawler is successfully created. Let's run this. The crawler has already started running. Let's wait for this to finish. You can see our crawler has successfully completed its first run. And you can see it says that one table change with 12 partition changes and the 12 representing the 12 months here, I guess. Let's go and explore the table. On the left-hand side, click on databases. I'll select flight source TB. This lists down the tables. This is the newly created table, partition underscore CSV. If I click on it, here is the list of columns it has created under schema. If you remember, in the getting started demonstration for the similar data set, we have the 64 number of columns available. In this case, it has created 65 columns, which means it has added one additional column for the schema. Let's go and check this out. This is the first 20 columns. This is second 20 columns, third 20. And this is the last set of columns here. You can see it has, for the 65th column, it has added MUN as the partition key here. This means the crawler has automatically identified the partition key based on the partition data available on S3. And it has created a mapped column in the AWS Clue table for it. If your data is partitioned with multiple keys on S3, it will pick up those multiple keys and create the partition keys on the AWS Clue table. If you click on partitions, you can see it has created 12 partitions, though they are not in order, but they are 12 in number altogether. And for each of them, it is having a reference of the files which is present, which means for the month 12, you can see the reference of the file which is available here. It's December2016.csv, which means the AWS Clue table is keeping the reference of all the partition data. The crawler has also created a partition index based on the partition key what we have. This is an optional configuration and we will understand the significance of the partition index more in the subsequent lectures. For the time being, I just wanted to highlight that what all a crawler can do for you in terms of the partition data.